My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm here with Laura Case. Laura, uh, just met you after CPAC. All oh, right. Yes. What, what were your thoughts about CPAC? It was really good. Yeah. It was yeah. really good. Yeah. I'm so, tired. I'm yeah, exhausted. I know exactly. I think we all are. We're just nonstop. But anyway, as I uh, as I was coming down here, got the the court card to help pack stuff up. We started a conversation. And you asked what that talk today was, and uh, so I told you, but you have a very interesting perspective about the importance of dads. Do you mind sharing with us? Sure, sure. I'm a divorced mom of two. My kids are now 20 and 23, and basically I divorced it. Uh, the kids were one and three, and I raised them, and I, I feel bad that I married kind of a, a bad guy, but I think for parents that don't marry bad guys, just maybe a bad marriage, the, the dads only having four days a month to spend with their kids is criminal. I think it's wrong. I married a bad guy. Um, but I also know the importance of men in especially boys' lives. And I had mentors for both of my kids. So um, when my older son turned 17, I had a party for him for his birthday, but it really wasn't for him. It was for the mentors. And I had 17 guys there that helped my kid learn how to change the oil, ride a bike, whatever. There were men. Right. And men that helped him know how to hunt or do whatever. And he has this plethora of men he can call now. Yeah. And they helped raise my kid. They yeah. were the most amazing things. Like, if you can get a mentor for your kid, who's a third party that's not in the middle of a divorce, it's the best thing ever because yeah. they help your kids and that's a, that's a safe person your kid can go to. Yeah. And I did that for both of my boys. And I think that um, men are critical in the lives of kids, especially boys. And I, I think the, the state and legally they're done such a disservice because there are some really great dads out there and there's some deadbeat moms out there and they shouldn't get to see their kids. and. That's just my feeling. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you talked about, I mean, we're not going to go into your husband at all. No, you don't need to. Um, I don't know whether he was actually in jail or not, but I, no. you told me very briefly, and you're right about things that you said there. So, uh, but you, what, we're talking about the idea of um, normal, good dads, uh -huh. or even average dads, because, you know, we talk about the good enough parent. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a perfect parent to no, be a good course. parent. You of can course. be a good enough parent. Right. And it's usually be it's best for kids in almost every instance, is there are some exceptions to be raised in an intact family with his it's or her two natural parents. mother yep. and two father. parents, period. absolutely. But in, in light of this, because, you know, sometimes when divorce takes place, you have a mentorship program in place. Mm -hmm. But for the, for the father's that want to, because usually the fathers are the ones that are discriminated against. Absolutely, uh -huh. um, fairly. So, do, what are you? What are your thoughts about, say, having an equal shared parenting time? Assuming it's a no-fault divorce or something like that. I have another issue with that, but assuming that you know two people just leave their marriage, um, do the courts are the courts prejudiced against dads by and large? What are your ideas about child support? Anything you can just go Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Well, no, the courts are totally discriminated against dads, and if you look at media in the last 30, 40 years. How are dads described in sitcoms? They're stupid, they're dumb, mm -hmm. they're this, they're that. So that's the idea that, that certain people in Hollywood are pushing. Right. And the dad is is none of those things. He's he's a role model. Like, how do you become a man? How do you know how to become a man yeah. without a guy in your life? Yeah. You have to have a man in your life. Yeah. A woman, as a single mom, can only do so much. You can't... You just, it's impossible. There's things that you can't do no matter how tough right. you think you are. Right. And I think that, that the courts totally discriminate against men. In order for uh, a guy to get custody of his kids, the mom's got to be turning tricks and have a meth lab and they got to be able to prove it before they'll take rights away from the mom. And that's wrong. I don't yeah. know. I, I hope that pendulum swings back. Yeah. But it's, it is, it's really bad and kids need both parents. And one of the best things that I was told when I got divorced by a mediator was, do not date. Like, don't date. Whatever you do, man or woman, don't date till your kids are grown. They're already down a parent. And if you're doing the whole yo-yo back and forth thing with your ex, they, and then you get married, and then your kids aren't as important as the new kids, your kids are going to be really screwed up. So just bite the bullet, wait till they're of age, and, and focus on your kids and do as much as you can to be part of their lives, even if it is only four days a month, push for more, push as much for as many days as you can get. Because your kids think you're a hero and you deserve to be in their life. Yeah, that's great to hear. So the idea, you said you had 17 mentors, Yes. Wow. So let me ask another question. That I mean, you have all boys. Would you have done the same thing yeah. if you had girls? 
Yeah, probably. I don't know if I would have found men, but yeah, I would have. Uh, somebody who's a third party who's not in the drama of a divorce. Yeah. Like uh, big brothers, big sisters. Those those people and the the mentors get as much if not more than the kids do. Yeah. Out of it because they're giving. Yeah. And you don't realize what impact you have upon a kid. Right. Even it's just the smallest thing. Like right. you know, it, it, and you may not think that you're the greatest person or yeah. even competent, yeah. but you are. So even in a two-parent intact family, you still need these other people. You need the coach. Oh, you need, you know, the lab, the the, uh, the shop teacher, whatever. I mean, yeah, there's always yes, absolutely. And so, the whole it takes a village. I hate that term. Right. It doesn't. It takes parents. Right. And if you're divorced, if you can communicate, I think my but I think the best idea for divorced people is that the judges would say the kids get to stay in the house and mom and dad. You go do 50-50 somewhere else. Right. The house is the central location, yeah. keeps the kids stable. Yeah. Mom comes in for a week, dad leaves. Dad comes in for a week, hey, you guys go have your backpacks go somewhere problems. else. Yeah. yeah, you take your backpack somewhere yeah. else, yeah. not the kids. The kids need a stable, consistent environment. So it was very interesting <laughs> that you mentioned this because I was actually talking about this during the GOP convention back uh -huh. in, in Texas. We had a, a smaller, we were talking about this issue, and there were some attorneys there like, well, how can you have 50-50? And I mentioned this idea, and this one family law attorney was like, that's a great idea. Uh -huh. It's like they had never thought about this because the, the, the family law attorneys, the system, the judges, the evaluators, and everything like that, they make their money off conflict. They don't look for solutions. You have a solution that I think is very valid. Number one, family and marriage should be primarily for the children, when you have children. Mm -hmm. Right, of course. I mean, yes. of course, you know, you're going to be times that you're going to want to kill your husband or he's going to want to kill you or you know, I want to never see this person again. Right, right. That is part of a marriage that you work right, through. Right, and you right. model to your children how to work through these things. There are things that you should not be in different relationships because of danger, safety issues and stuff like that. But the idea that why should children bear the burden that one or both parents have forced upon them, you need to protect the children Absolutely. and also make sure they have access to both parents. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially if, if both parents just don't get along, but both parents are good people. Right. And then there's different rules for different houses. So if you have the main house and this is the, the set of rules, that's great, but I, 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 the kids are the ones that suffer from it, right. from divorce, and then they, if one parent's married and then they start having other kids, then the kids, <coughs> the kids are now, they're like just an afterthought. So right. They're not as good as the new kids, right? right? Right. And then the other parent does the same thing, and then so they're like a yo-yo in between the right. two entities, right. and then they, they go on to get pregnant at 15 or 16, and, uh, and the cycle continues, right. and they don't have good relationships. It's interesting so, that you say that, because something like divorce and in families tends to be transgenerational. What, mm -hmm. what happens in one generation happens in the next, and often more. The children of divorce are far more likely to get divorced themselves, especially Absolutely. if you have two children of divorce. Um, they've not had anything long before them like permanency. It's not that mm -hmm. it's something that's inevitable, but it just the odds of them doing that are much higher. Yeah. And then even like you, I think you kind of mentioned when we were talking some of the other issues, whether it's uh, getting pregnant outside of wedlock, mm -hmm. and issues like dropping out of high school, yeah. mental Doing drugs, getting in jail. Right. Oh yeah, the whole nine yards. Right. And I always used to, uh, when I was, now I'm free, my kids are old enough now, but yeah. when they were younger, I would never tell people I was a single mom. Yeah. A, because I'm a divorced mom. Yeah. I'm not a single mom. Right. I did have them 24-7, but basically, they, I didn't want anybody to know. Right, right. Because it has a bad connotation that you're a single parent. Right. And for a guy, when they're a single parent, they have full custody. Everybody goes, oh, let me make you dinner. When yeah. you're a single mom, they go, yeah, yeah. good luck. Um, so, so, so regardless, whether it's a, whether it's a divorced dad or uh -huh. a divorced mom, right. um, they need to have a support group around them. And, yes. And, and probably it's best from what I hear you saying that uh, th th does the mentors have to be necessarily the same sex as the child? I mean, because there are some issues when you have like a, right. a daughter and a, and a and a man, you might say, okay, this because the, the perception is this is going to be set somebody up for abuse. Absolutely. And and, and, and these this day and age right now, when you have the female teachers going yes. after male students, the same thing takes place. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So how Absolutely. do you work that out? That there is a mentorship or people with the children 
that um, are safe. That are safe. Yeah. How do you do that? It's it's hard. So um, when my oldest was five years old, I put a thing in this church I was going to. I need a male mentor because I couldn't get him in the mentorship program until he was seven or eight. Yeah. And I was like, he needs a mentor now. He's like five year old, just crazy boy. Yeah. And uh, this one guy said, Oh, I can't. Uh, I can do it. I really want to be a mentor to your son. I'm getting a divorce and I have a little girl and I think it would be the greatest thing in the world. And the hair on the back of my neck just, just stood, stood up. up. <laughs> oh, and yeah. I said, hey, I'll call you. I'll let you know. Yeah. And an older gentleman from the same church. He's if like, I'm interested, I'll let you know. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I know exactly. And this older man kept calling me going, did anybody call you yet? And I'm like, no. And he yeah. goes, okay, I'll do it. Yeah. And he wasn't physically able to go play football or anything, yeah. but he, he taught my son different things because yeah. uh, he was an older gentleman. And and six months later, the first guy yeah. was arrested for pedophilia. Yeah. yeah. So, that is... you know, the program I was in where I lived, they would vet people. But yeah. you had to be like age seven. Yeah. And they didn't, it wasn't the next kid in line or the next mentor. Yeah. It was if you had a match, personality wise. Yeah. And they vet them, they background check them. Yeah. Then I felt safe. But I had that gap from five to seven. And my older kid had this ability to just find guys. Yeah. Hey, I don't know how to hunt. Do you yeah, know how to you, hunt? Yeah. Can you show me how to hunt? Yeah. And this great couple, like they knew how to hunt. Yeah. And so they're friends and they, yeah. my son will call them now and say, hey, how's it going? Yeah. So it's just the more people that you can uh, get in your surrounding and not date, don't date them, but have them as part of your family, yeah. men or women. Yeah. And um, your kids are more likely to be sexually and mentally abused if you're a single parent by a member of the opposite sex or maybe even the same sex. And so you, you are the only protection for your kids. Yeah. So you better be there like a mom or dad grizzly to protect them. And I would do a background check on anybody that you date, which you shouldn't do till they're 18, by the way. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Sorry. That's, no, that's great I get really wound up because yeah. my kids turned out all right. Yeah. But a lot of people have this revolving door of men or women in their lives. And all that does is like, oh, you have to love their two kids. And then you break up two years later. You don't have to talk to them anymore. Yeah. And, and the that other thing is, children. you know what else doesn't help children? Is when you're in a new relationship and you're telling your children to call this person mommy or this person daddy. Or brother or sister. A brother or sister, yeah. Because Brady Bunch doesn't you know, exist. Yeah, that's a very... It does that, not that's exist. A good, yeah, yeah. So what about grandparents? What are the role of grandparents in, in situations like this? Um, I don't know if your grandparents were around, if, if your parents were around, or... I, I know with his parents, because of the, the issues that you faced with him, that, that I understand that part. But what about your parents? Were they around, or...? Uh, they were 2,000 miles away. Okay. So that was hard, but... Um, and I... Yeah, all my family was far away. So it was, that was another reason to get the mentors. Luckily, right. my ex-husband's his parents were dead, so... Easy. Okay. But his family did not back me up at all. Okay. So it's just my family, and I have brothers that, that would call my boys. Yeah. It was a, I was focused on men being in my kids' lives. Yeah. And it's been awesome for yeah. that. So okay. I, what about in a situation where there is a single mom, you know, that something happened, you know, they, they she has a baby, now she's a single mom, and that father wants to be in the children's lives. Assuming good person, you know, fit willing and able, right, whatever. Right, right. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, absolutely. He should be involved in the kid's life. And, yeah. and a lot of guys go, well, I'll wait till the kid's five when he does something. It's not a blob anymore. Yeah. But they don't understand that that kid bonds with you from day one. Right. And right. you need to be involved. And a lot of dads feel, because of the media, because of different TV shows, that they're not important. Yeah. You are so important in that kid's life from yeah. day one. Yeah. Change a diaper. It's not a big deal. Yeah. You know, he'll figure it out. But so, that kid needs a dad. Yeah. And yeah. the dads need to be in the kid's life. And I have a brother who uh, got divorced. He had four days with his kids. His kids didn't talk to him for two years. He would drive two hours to go get those kids. He'd drive two hours back. They'd spend like 24 hours with them. And they wouldn't talk to him the whole time. Wow. He did that for years. Yeah. And now he has a relationship with those kids. Yeah. And it's a long story. But anyway, yeah. he, he put in, so even if you're being treated like dirt and your kids hate your guts because they're being poisoned against you, put in the effort because you do matter and one day the kids will realize that. You talk about poison such as the issue of alienation. Absolutely. So do courts and our laws in help facilitate or encourage alienation by and large because of what you've seen as far as the courts, the injustices that take place, you said the four days a month. 
dads in the, in the children's life four days a month, that means 27 days a month, 26 yeah. days a month, whatever it may be. Right. Um, they're not with that and they may hear things, bad things about that, uh, may not be built up. You know, what are your thoughts about that? Do the, do the courts or our laws help to facilitate or encourage alienation and bad behavior one court or another? I'm not really sure about the courts, but I know lawyers certainly encourage it because it's because chink a chink at an hourly rate. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they're going to get more money. Right. Um, I think that uh, with my kids, I never said anything bad about their dad. Mm -hmm. I always said, he loves you in the way that he can. Yeah. With a smile on my face. Yeah. And then when they were 14 or 15, then they started figuring stuff out. And the way I look at it is, I fell in love with this person as an adult. Right with really big rose-colored glasses on, yeah. right? Yeah. And you do, you fall in love with people and then you have kids and then all of a sudden you expect your children to hate this other person. Yeah. Which yeah. is not right because it's that's abusive. Their, it's abusive to yes, the children. It is. Yeah. And that's their that's their that's their parent who loves them supposedly unconditionally. Yeah. And the kids love them unconditionally. Yeah. So how can you ask a kid to just hate that person because now you despise that person? Yeah. That's not fair. So yeah. I never said anything negative about my ex husband. It was always he loves you in the way that he can. And my kids don't have a relationship with him now. But they're old enough. If they want one, they can have one. They've had access to him for 10 years and he chose not to partake so that's on him yeah. and my kids have moved on with their lives and they will be I used to always tell my kids you have two opportunities you have a dad and one day you'll become a dad yeah. and so I messed up on the first part by giving you a bad dad but you know how to be an amazing dad because of all someday. these people around you yes but yeah. get married first I'm like please get married first yeah. and then you can have babies and I'll come help babysit but yeah. do it the right way yeah and, yeah. and you'll have amazing kids well so. they say that if you do a couple of things if yes. you graduate from high school get a job get married before you have children your chances of going into poverty are like less than five percent Exactly. You do those three things. It's just that simple. You want to break poverty, number one, mm -hmm. finish high school, number two, get a job, number three, get married before you have children. That's it. And and that's been, uh, again and again, I, I've heard about this. And, and that seems yes. to be the, the common pattern if you do this. It's logical. Yeah. yeah. And that's also, the, the other thing that should be added to that is, if you do get divorced or you become a widow, don't date. Yeah. It's really not hard, and if you're only if you get a break four days a month, yeah. go ahead and go out on a date, but don't fall in love, don't get married, just get out of your system those four days that you're free. Yeah. But your kids have you, and that's yeah. it. So, so don't complicate. It's this. very interesting you talk about this because I've I've got friends that went through this. Now they had more of the 50-50 arrangement, right. and. Uh, but the same thing is that when the children are with somebody else, they, they were free to do that, but not when the person right. had the children. Because that, that is very crucial, especially with younger children. To bring in another person is, again, I think it's abusive to the children. I mean, when I, I remember going to high school, you know, somebody got pregnant and shotgun marriages were encouraged. Mm -hmm. and, I'll tell Sometimes you. Sometimes it probably works. They worked a lot. Right, right, right. Because marriage is for the protection of children. Mm -hmm. Now, we've also talked about issues like, say, legislation. I'll, I'll wrap you up here pretty quickly here. But say, for example, we have a bill right now in the state of Texas. It's called House Bill 803. And what the, um, what the gist of the bill is, is that if there is a divorce, um, and you know, I, I think divorce is way too easy. I think divorce should be changed. Divorce law should be changed. Um, I think attorneys, like you say, make a lot of money off of this stuff. They inflame passions that don't need to be inflamed. But if a divorce should occur, that um, that both parents go to court as equal. So if if if, if they're if, if they're what well, would say say fit, willing, and able, that they should be e treated with equality before the court and that the presumption should be that they each have equal access. And like you said, I liked, your, I liked your model, and I think that we need to talk about this model. The kids stay here. You've caused this problem for them. This going back and forth, as fun as it may be, as much as you want to be with them, is still putting trauma upon them. It's still causing problems for the right, children. Right. So, um, but if we had a legislation like that, you would be, be behind it? Oh, absolutely, 100%. Yeah. 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 Because the focus is, a lot of times, not on the kids. It's on the parents and their love lives. Right. But it's not on the kids. Yeah. It's, it's like, this is insane. Why, why are you focused on your kid? You're yeah. focused on when you're having your next date. Yeah. So, and so 
to your kids. Yeah, yeah. It's stupid. It almost sounds to me like you would almost like to have legislation is that if you get divorced and you have kids. No dating. No dating for the next no. six. Yeah. Until, yeah. You t until the kids are 18, you are done. Yes. You know, and that becomes Absolutely. a yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that's you can't legislate that, I but it's that. just common sense right. when you're but focusing on your strong, kids. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't buy, I have seen lots of single parents yeah. that go through boyfriends and girlfriends. Their kids are very screwed up. Yeah. My kids are really solid. Yeah. And yes, they don't have the nuclear family kind of thing. Right. There was three of us and two dogs. Yeah. But they know that I was there for them. Right. And my parents had a 60 year marriage. So they yeah. saw that. They saw other marriages that were solid. Yeah. And I surrounded myself with people that had solid marriages. Yeah. So they saw that mom. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, just not having another person in the, in the thing helps versus having a revolving door of guys because yeah. then the kids then they're always looking for love in yeah. the wrong place as the sun goes yeah. but then they never are going to achieve it because the model that they had is way screwed up yeah so let me take one other question yeah, sure. here because this is going to be a little bit more sensitive sure. but the reality is this is what drives a lot of these issues is the issue of child support mm -hmm. because if you have a 50 50 shared parenting mm -hmm. some people say well there should be no child support and if this person can't afford maybe I should be the one. I look at things a lot differently. I want to go back to a fault-based divorce model okay. or at least by mutual agreement because right now no fault divorce is imposed and the person who says wait a minute I don't even want a divorce now gets to pay child support is forced to do so right. and it creates um, it creates difficulties for the uh, even for the financial planning for the children, because maybe their college funds are at risk, um, you now have to support two households versus one, whereas if you had the one household together, you can save more money. I've seen it affect people in retirement, and, and this is a little bit personal to me, because I've seen this happen where, because of some of these onerous child support obligations, you must take care of your children. Well, let me have my children half the time, and right. reduce we'll this, right. right? And then you get to, to retirement, and now you have elderly people that don't have the financial assets that they right. should. So now you have another issue on the other side, and That's we true. don't link the things together as we should. Right. So what are your thoughts, if you don't mind? Because you, you've been very outspoken. I'm sorry. No, no. Oh, yeah, I'm an introvert, and not really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can tell, obviously. But what are your thoughts about the issue of child support? Um, and because that's a that's a whole other situation, I know, and, and the reality is that the states, like for example in Texas, in our Texas Family Code 201.107C, it says that the judge is supposed to rule in such a manner so as to maximize Title IV funds in the state. Title IV funds are, are federal funds that come to the state with child support orders. So there is, there is no incentive to the state to make things a little bit less onerous because the, the higher the child support order the more money you collect right it's, right. it's a very perverse incentive and right. you know if, if you're having 50 50 you're like well wait a minute if I'm 50 50 why should I be paying if two, I have four, like, four days a month right for a kid right that's an expensive four days but the state makes money right and then they and then the moment that you don't do that they call you either a deadbeat right. dad or a deadbeat right. mom because right. yes, there's both of them course, yes. but, but but it's really almost extortion by the state because they are profiting. In tech, and I can say this because in Texas, you know, they brag about, I think it's 13, 14 years straight, they have led the nation in child support collection. This past year, the Attorney General announced that he, uh, that, 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 that the funds, no wait, they, they um, they collected $4.8 billion in funds because they're protecting the children. Now I would say, well, if you want to protect the children, start denying divorces. Start telling these two single people, get married. Now I figure it out. Yeah, yeah. figure yeah, it right, out. Right. You know, Go to what, counseling. The best interest of the child is to be, generally speaking, right. raising right. a two-parent household, sure. you figure it out. The best interest of the child is not to have the children deprived from their mother or their father. And that also impacts parents too. Oh. And then say, I'm going to now financially plunder this person who's been plundered already right. by the attorney. Right. But right. So, so what are your thoughts about the child support? Well, interesting you should ask me this question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just finished suing my ex-husband for money he owed me because I was scrubbing toilets. I did whatever I could to keep a roof over my kids' heads. I gotcha. 
and he would not pay child support and he knew the system like how much money does he have to owe me before there's a bench warrant put out for him right and he'd throw a hundred bucks and then then he'd be take it away yeah then he'd leave me the, I'd be left alone for six months and meanwhile yeah. I'm like trying to feed my kids I, I, I so, agree with that I know um, what you're saying yeah so but I I was I saved receipts for everything because he was yeah. supposed to pay for extracurricular activities yeah. lacrosse braces you name it whatever and I paid for everything yes. and I billed them and he didn't pay any of it yeah. So then he came into some money, and I took a lot of it because I had all those receipts. So keep your receipts, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you, but, but, but you, they're bringing up another point. <laughs> should should the person receiving child support have to submit receipts? Because sometimes, I'll be honest with you. Sometimes people get the child support and they go out and they get a nice, they get they nails done, do whatever, yeah, they yeah, do yeah, whatever. Yeah, they, they go out for the, the nice club, nightclub. But this is we're we're collecting child support, but we're using it for our own. Purposes. Well, it would be kind of nice if the child support could go to pay rent or in certain situations right. where the, they're very destitute oh, wow. and it went to, you know, because a lot of people that are in those situations, because once you get divorced, you're plunged in poverty. Right. I have a college degree. I was plunged in poverty. I was cleaning toilet. I was doing whatever I had to do. I, I got it. And um, a lot of people, yeah. you know, if, if the couple's more successful, one party is left destitute and the other one is not. Right. And the one that is not sometimes is going on to their other family. Right. And they're right. going to Europe, they're going here, they're going there, yeah. they're going everywhere, and the other person is destitute. That's what kind of happened to me. Right. And so I kept track of everything, knowing one day, just maybe one day, yeah. something good will happen and I'll yeah. have the documentation for it. So, yeah. But I would never expected it because I, it was me and my two boys and I had to raise them. So um, on child support, I, I think it should be more equitable. Yeah. And it is, you can go back to the court and say, look, I'm, I lost my job, I did this for that. Yeah. But a lot of parents go underground. So yeah. you can't you yeah. look at their old tax records. Yeah. And typically, I'm from Colorado. Typically, in Colorado, they look at the tax returns from when you were getting a loan. Yeah. And, because and, that tells yeah. the judge a lot, right? Yeah. It, it does. But then they have like imputed income. Well, you've made this here. Now you've gone through a divorce. And, you know, there's a lot of things that may have happened. But because you made this here, you could make the same or more now. So now, even though you lost your job, we're still going to charge you the more. And, and modifications there's, cost money. Yeah, there's no extenuating circumstances, right, and right. there's no changes, and, and that stinks, but if you're not going to step forward and and go figure out how to, I mean, there's legal documents you can find online. Yeah. You can do, get pro bono assistance, usually for most courthouses, to usually, file the documents. Usually it helps, the, the pro bono stuff, I think, helps more with the person who has custody, because we're talking about equal custody here versus the 27-4, right. 26-4. Right, right. Okay. So, so the, the people with the 26 versus the Right. Four. They get the free custody and they can keep going back. We want more money, we want more money, we want more money. It's costing more to this, it's costing more to that. There's no accountability as far as receipts are concerned. Right. And the person who's like, well, wait a minute here. Divorce becomes now a lawsuit that never ends. And, and the and, 20 and years of hell. 20 years of hell, and you've yeah. got to keep on hiring attorneys. Because I think really the family law attorneys, wow. the divorce wow. is one this thing, but they know that the divorce is going to create. Multiple streams of income for them. Oh, in the absolutely. Future. Residual income. For yeah, that. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's where I go with some of this stuff. I mean, the, the, the best thing, again, is I heard somebody say, well, you know what? It's too expensive yeah. to stay together. Well, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Right, right. But, but the problem, but, I think, is that most men look at it and they go, I have four days a month. Eh, who cares? I'm not paying and I'm, I'm just yeah. going to go underground. Yeah. So he doesn't see his kids. And then he doesn't pay for them either. So it's and a double whammy for the kids. Yeah. I mean, there are deadbeat guys like that, deadbeat moms right. like that, for sure. And they found as well with a lot of studies that if the parenting is more equal, the person who is paying child support is more willing to do that. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, 26 to 4, it's like, wait a minute, I'm being screwed here to begin with. Now I'm being screwed financially. I am going to go underground. Is it what yeah. the, the, the mentality is? I almost don't blame them. Right, right, exactly. But if it's more equal, listen, I'm going to be in their lives. I want to be involved. And, and, I, and you know, maybe there needs to be something that um, I, I really think the church should be much more involved in this because mm -hmm. the legal system is not designed to create peace and it's, it's right. designed to hit every with every problem it is a hammer it is a Absolutely. saw yes. it's not how do we fix this together it's how do we break somebody right. so um, but it's very interesting talking with you thank oh, you about thanks. your whole idea about the mentorship and, oh, yeah. and your own yeah. program we I mean personally my hearts go out to 
uh, I've seen because I'm against the no-fault divorce thing. Right, of course. I've yeah, seen both yeah, men and course. women that Abuse have it. that have been yeah. abused, mm -hmm. that have abused it and have been abused by it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I've seen some women that I've talked with and I've thought, how in the world have they done this? And. Uh, you know, uh, it's 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 well, same thing with men too. I mean, it's a very difficult road to face, especially when they wanted to keep the marriage and the family intact. Um, so I, it was very interesting, very nice talking with you, meeting you, and uh, I admire the what you said. You know, the little bit that you shared with me oh, about thanks. everything right. that you did to make sure that your children were taken care of. Well, that's the one thing I give most. The most advice I give to people that are going through it is document stuff. Right. But do not date. Seriously, do not date. It, I mean, just don't, because your kids are at risk in multiple ways, yeah. and you can go 10 or 15 years, like, just get over it. You made it, you made a bad choice, your kids are the ultimate, yeah. that's all that matters. And like my brother, who went through hell for two years, he has a pretty good relationship with his kids now, yeah. because he put forth, the, I mean, imagine driving four hours to see your kids and they won't talk to you. Yeah, yeah. And then you spend time with them and you have no money because the wife is bankrupted pretty much. And you're like, well, we're just sitting at home and the kids still aren't talking to you. Two yeah. years he went through that. Yeah. I admire him for that. I, I think he really went to the distance. Yeah. And now they're they're older and they're and there's a lot of stories like that where the, yeah. once the kids are away from the other parent, yeah. they're, 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 they come back and there's a reconciliation. Yeah. But if the dad never fought or the mom never fought for their kids, the kids have a resentment towards that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I know my kids are like, where's, been, where's dad? Been? Yeah. Like, he could care less about them and they know it. Yeah. It's bad. So, yeah, yeah. In the situations where um, that takes, some of the stuff takes place as well, sometimes there's one spouse that actually will not talk to the other spouse. You know, Call the email. They will Whatever not, you're gonna do, get a mediator. If, don't contact me again or I'll call the police. That's it, bad. It's bad. Yeah, it's really bad. And, and, yeah. I, and I can tell you, I know of that. I can speak in a personal Oh, I know. Way. That stuff happens. Yeah. yeah and, sure. uh, you know, the, the first thing is, that especially primarily if you're a male, if there is an allegation of anything, you are guilty and until you're proven innocent. Absolutely. And, and the kids suffer from that. Yeah. And the courts are biased against it. Yeah. And the psycho mom gets away with it yeah. by saying whatever. Yeah. It's very similar to, okay, you and I are married. I punch you, right? Yeah. Then you you go to punch me back. Who's going to jail? You are. That's not right. <laughs> you can hit yourself and right. I can go to jail. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there are people that do it's that. It's, I mean, no, but it's a double standard. Right, it is a double it's standard. It's a double standard against men who want to be an active participant in their children's lives. Yeah. Just because they're a man doesn't mean they only get four days. Right. It should be 50-50. Yeah. And just because you birthed your child doesn't give you a right to 27 days of the month yeah. just because you're a female. It's yeah. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And the courts, I, every state's different, but I, I, I just don't think it's fair. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's no, I mean, what, half the population or more is divorced. Yeah. So how, how do you make that into something that, okay, it's the norm, but how do you make the kids as healthy as they can be within right. that norm. Right. And that's not dating. Right. Don't date. Yeah. So, so if anyways, so sorry. don't date at least until the kids are eighteen. Yes. And don't force them. Blended families, I know that people try to romanticize them like they're the Brady Bunch or something like that. You create a lot of problems. Nope. Um, that's the reality of it. Yep. And uh, anyway background um, checks. Background <laughs> checks. <laughs> Make my sure kids, my kids will be criminal. doing background checks on whoever I date, which is funny. They're like, yeah. we have to make sure he's good enough for you, Mom. Yeah, that's very that's, It's kind of flipped around, but yeah. that's good. So, yeah, it was great talking to you. Great I love this you. channel. Yeah. I'm going to tune in now because I think uh, dads need as many cheerleaders as they can because they don't think they're important. Yeah. They've been told oh. they're not important. Yeah. And the yeah. court system tells them they're not important. Yeah. And then they're poisoned by the mom, and then the kids don't think they're important. And the they laws are. tell them they're not important. Yeah, the and they're laws important. laws passed by legislature. Yeah, Men are so important. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. are so important in a kid's life. Yeah. And uh, the girls need the dads because otherwise they end up with daddy issues. And boys need men in their lives. Yeah. So there's no, they just do. Yeah. So well, anyway, thank I'm you. sorry. No, no, no. On forever. But we're going to wrap this up okay, here. You gave me a whole you. lot of time. Thank, thank you. you so much. You it was much. wonderful. Okay, thank Tune you. into our channel. Okay, I will. And uh, I'll, I'll also send you some information so you can see the video. That'd be great. So, okay, thank you so hard. much. Appreciate it.